Hey, welcome to Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy. Thanks for coming. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for regularly being here uh, after the numerous mistakes we have made here on the show. Uh, I can't thank you enough for continuing to come to the show. I really appreciate it. We are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, streaming live on YouTube, sometimes on Facebook, but always on YouTube now. Everything is uploaded or everything is done on uh, YouTube. Six o'clock at night during the week, we have content going up. Do me a favor, I'll get to this real quick. If you're on YouTube watching it right now, just jump down, subscribe, like the video. Do it, do it, do it. Like the video real quick, subscribe to the page. It goes a long way. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much. Normally right around here, oh, after the show, after we do these shows, I'll have the guest out in a few minutes, we record, and they are, they're uploaded to podcast. So we will be on every podcast uh, format or platform within the next day or two. It'll be, uh, you know, Spotify and iTunes and uh, iHeartRadio, which apparently takes a little bit longer for some reason. I'm not really sure. But uh, I need to fix things over there at iHeart radio right about here i go there's news there's a lot of news today i'll get to it in a minute uh uh normally i go hey let's let's thank the sponsors because could you should thank the sponsors up front the people this show is sponsored by and here's what i do i go this show is sponsored by uh no one because i don't have any official sponsors but in reality uh my sponsors are all of the viewers uh, i have several people that tune in on a regular basis you've been very gracious very helpful very nice and i can't thank you enough uh from the bottom of my heart the fact that you're all tuning into the show and supporting me on a financial basis it helps me take care of uh, all the upgrades and the stuff that i had to buy because before uh covid you know all i had was a a phone that's it now i have a whole bunch of stuff so thank you so much for uh, supporting the show if you want to support the show financially if you're interested if you like uh quarantine comedy or any of the online 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 content that i provide uh feel free i made it easier look just go to LennySchmidt.com slash if you can. See? See how that? If you can. If you can support, if you can, go to LennySchmidt.com slash if you can. There are numerous ways to support the show on that page right now. You can, you can use your credit card and you can charge like as low as a buck, uh, five bucks, uh, 25. Anything over 25, by the way, I will gladly send you a download copy of all three of my most recent albums that I have on download copy. You can also donate. It's a little structured down. There's 25 bucks. I think it goes to 100. I think there's a slot for 1,000 just to make it easy for you guys. Uh, even easier is PayPal is on that page as well. You can go to PayPal and there's a little knot there. It starts at a dollar and you can donate as much as you want. You can click it up to a dollar, two. If you want to go as high as two bucks, feel free to donate two bucks. Uh, or if you want to go 10, 15, or 1,000, again, you can do it there on PayPal. Feel free to do all of that right there uh, at LennySchmidt.com slash if you can. Um, if you're on a mobile phone and you go there, you can also donate through Venmo on that particular page as well. PayPal will allow you to do that. Or you can go to the Venmo page, which is uh, Ven my Venmo is at Lenny Schmidt. You can hit any one of those, and I will be more than happy um, to, uh, to take uh, your money. I will really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show and donating. Also, if you can't, uh, for some reason, if you can't donate or sponsor, I'm playing with the buttons right now. If you can't donate or sponsor financially, I understand COVID sucks. You know, I mean, I'm online trying to get sponsor money. So if you can't, if you enjoy the show and you don't want to sponsor money, you don't want to give me any money, that's fine. Do me a favor. You can sponsor or support the show even without spending a dime. Go to the YouTube page and just subscribe to the YouTube page. It's Lenny Schmidt Comedy. Just go check it out and support the show that's it apparently subscriptions uh are as good as money that's what the the knights of the round table at youtube have told me when i asked them what i should do about getting paid for these shows that pull in 80 viewers a day so there you go there's your two options bam you can go there go to lenny schmidt.com slash if you can or you can go to the venmo go at lenny schmidt or you can just simply do something uh and uh, follow us on, uh, on on youtube there there you go subscribe to us on youtube that's it i think it's uh that's pretty much it let's get to uh we should get to the guests now and i will in a second however if you haven't guessed by now uh this is pre-recorded this is a new pre-recorded opening because um I'm sick and tired of opening the show, uh, screaming at the computer and plugging in cords and strangling myself and hitting buttons and trying to connect to the guests and I never get anything right. And then I miss all this promo stuff and I can't plug the websites. I can't plug anything. I can't plug anything correctly. So I just taped it all. That's it. I taped it. 
So now there's not going to be any, there's no issue. Now I got it all out there and uh, we're going to start the show like we normally do right now. So now, now it all goes to shit right now. It all goes to shit in three, two. Yeah, I did that thing with the volume again, didn't I? Yeah, where I forgot to turn my mic on. Yeah, hey, how are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, I'm really good at this, by the way. I'm really good at this tech stuff. Uh, I don't need help or nothing. It's ridiculous. Uh, first of all, right off the top, I want to say hello to some people that are here. But most importantly, Robin Greenberg, thank you very much today. Uh, you hit me up today on the uh, support page. Uh, if you can, again, if you guys, you know, if you're throwing money financially at the show, it's Lenny Schmidt, if you can. And I mentioned in the promo, also, I noticed this on YouTube. Uh, la the last video, we had, uh, these, you know, some people were watching. I had 30 or 40 people watching the video on YouTube, which is cool. I'm checking out YouTube right now. There's a lot of you guys. Yeah, I fixed the sound thing. Got it. All right. It all, all works now. Tell me you can hear me. So it's all, it's all better. Okay. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, do me a favor. Uh, a, like the video. And B, subscribe to the channel. Those two things... You can do them. You're right there on YouTube, man. All you got to do is go to the bottom of the screen of the right-hand corner. There's a little button there that says subscribe. If you click on that, you are automatically subscribed to my page. That's that's pretty cool. And then you go to the little thumbs up. Already I got four thumbs up. You know, let's make it five. I can like my own page. There you go. I like my own video. I don't care. I'll do it. I'm not proud. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Um, so like the page and like or like the video and subscribe to the page. I would really I'd appreciate it. I have some new lights I'm working with today. What do you guys think? Not bad. Looks my big look makes my big fat Irish forehead look even uh, shinier than it normally is on a normal day. Uh, I didn't. I'm gonna do something tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but Wednesday. I'm gonna do a new news thing where I'm gonna put the news in the screen and we're gonna go over it before I bring the guest up. But I'm not doing that today because I realized I just started going with the news and things are happening. There were more gunshots at the White House. If you're if you're into this or if you're paying attention. There was there were there were gunshots at the fire at the White uh, White House, so the president had to cut his briefing sh uh, short. Uh, I'm I, whatever happens, I hope he's okay. I be honest with you, I thought there were gonna be way way more gunplay at that White House when he got voted in. That's just me. Uh, there has only been what four times now, I think, that there's somebody been there with a gun. I don't know. I'm not saying anyone should go. Let's not f make this a thing, okay? Don't, I don't want the Secret Service knocking on my door and going, "Hey, are you inciting violence?" No, I'm not. I'm just I'm surprised. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So I'm surprised. Uh, once again, I want to say this again because I, I don't know if the sound was on or out. Robin Greenberg, thank you very much uh, for, for supporting the show today on the, on the If You Can page. So the rest of you guys, if you can go to, you go to If You Can and check it out. Uh, tell people to click on the bell and select all notifications. Okay. Uh, click on the bell and select all notifications. I don't know what that means, but Alex said to do it. Uh, I'm surrounded by people that are way smarter than me, so I take their advice as much as possible. So you click on the bell, that way you get notified when I go live. You know when I'm going live. Also, starting uh, tomorrow, for those of you guys, uh, we, are, we are only live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. However, we will have something up every weekday. So tomorrow night at 6, I'm going to start uh, putting up new videos. Uh, that a lot of them are, are footage from before, earlier shows. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm rerunning or putting up or re-editing the um, Billy D. Washington uh, show it was a great show we did a few weeks ago and we talked about the specifics of stand-up techniques so forth stuff like that and his podcast by the way you should check it out tales of the virus hang on i should drink this coffee or hold it like this for the whole show which would be better who knows who knows brother uh what else i got uh all right the mulligans everybody's on this way i like to see everybody's over on youtube Get over to YouTube, man. Pretty soon we're not going to be on Facebook anymore. That's all, that's all I'm saying. So make sure you get yourself over there to the YouTube. The YouTube. Let's go back to the Facebook. Larry Swick is on Facebook. Okay. Mulligans. Yo, disc with a string. I don't know what that means. Everybody's saying hello. All right, you guys are great, man. It's great. Things are going well. Uh, this is a fun week. A lot of comics this week. That's what it's going to be, man. It's going to be a lot, of, just a lot of comedians. So let's get to right to one of them. 
as we speak uh, right now, bring this guest out here. This is a guy. This guy's a friend of mine. I've known him for years. I've known him a very long time. Uh, let's. Uh, his name is. Uh, his name is John McClellan. Let's get a little taste though of uh, my good friend uh, John uh, McClellan. Let's do that. Let's try not to screw this up. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. <laughs> So I'm in the steakhouse one night and a fight breaks out in the restaurant. Literally, a fist fight where one table of three guys start fighting another table of three guys. A legitimate fist fight. And we see this and we as the guys in the tuxedos run to try to break it up. And we run over there and we get mixed up in the fight. So we have to start fighting back. And the managers see it. And the managers come over and they get involved in the fight as well. And we're right across the street from the police precinct. So a moments later, the police come in and they bust everything up and arrest the perpetrators. We go around and apologize to everybody after the fight. But the best part about this was after the ship was over. We all went upstairs and watched the security footage of the fight, <laughs> and, the fight and no sound. And then the fight breaks out. And then the tuxedos arrive. And then the suits arrive. And then the police arrive. It's the closest I've ever been to being in a Charlie Chaplin film in my entire life. Yeah, folks, that's the one and only, my good friend. Here he is right now, live and in person. John McClellan, here he comes. Look, there he is, man. Yeah, woohoo, John McClellan. I have the same jacket on. <laughs> Do you have the same jacket? That's all right. I, you know how many, I didn't realize how I few. No idea what video I, <laughs> I didn't realize how few clothes I had until I started doing this show. And then every night I'm looking for a different shirt. Well, you know what? I probably got like 10 different jackets. And I'm like, yeah, let's pick the one jacket of the video that he's going to show so I don't look like I've missed that show. Well, this way they know it's you. Lenny, thanks for having me on the show. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks uh, thanks for being here, buddy. I haven't seen you. I saw you once in New York last year when we had uh, lunch and some cigars and uh, hung out. But then yeah, besides... a little over a year ago. Yeah. And then besides that, uh, it's been forever, dude. We used to see each other a lot back in Chicago. Well, I, I think it would be beneficial for everyone to, to give a little history of how we know each other. This way, we, people can understand. So I moved to Chicago in the mid-90s, maybe 96, um, from Cincinnati. My uh, wife had got a job in Chicago. I wanted to live downtown. She did not. So we moved to Wheaton, Illinois, which is as far as downtown away from it you could get. Yeah, it's where Belushi's from, but you can't buy booze in there after like ten o'clock. Yeah, so, it's a very <clears throat> we met city. at the Naperville Funny Bone, which is right next to that, because your brother was uh, one of the house MCs down there, and we met that. Now <clears throat> later on, uh, I moved downtown because my relationship, uh, my, my my wife didn't like the women I was dating. Is what happened? <laughs> so <clears throat> I moved. Uh, down. And then you and I started to hang out a little bit more. We uh, <clears throat> we we would do a lot of uh, insane stuff. Like I don't know if you remember this, but you and I <clears throat> were in the uh, Chicago Comedy Festival. We did a show, and the show is this: Lenny hosts a show, then it's me, and then it's Doug Stanhope, and then it's Tom Rhodes. And then it's Louis C.K. That was the show. Yeah, it was a good Never festival. Never seen people in the show. That's it. No, nope. 17 people when you two first came to America. Yeah. That would be like a 300-hour show today. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <clears throat> we always, right? So I just, I we would always stir up a little bit of trouble. Um, and you were never there where the trouble start, it actually happened. You were there in the planning stage. <laughs> But you were that, you know, like, you were there when it happened. Well, I like to now, get the ball rolling a, and then leave it to you guys. You know what I mean? That's kind of my thing. Yeah, you're like, yeah, John, that's a good idea. And then you're gone. You're vapor. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like you're like the instigator. You're like yeah. on my shoulder. Go, yeah, John, yeah. go ahead, do it. See ya. Yeah. So there was a uh, uh, a showcase at Janie's downtown. I lived literally a block away from Janie's. And... It was for like the Aspen Comedy Festival. There was like 120 comics. And there were these two kids. They were twins. Good looking guys and 
you know, but everybody hated him because they were good looking. So we decided what happened was everybody got two minutes in this show, right? And they would announce a person's name and everybody would clap and applaud. And the person would do two minutes and people would laugh. And then we'd go, thank you. Oh, very that was much. that last night. Would, uh, would that was that last night. Uh, last night potluck show where they would, and you never knew when you were going on, they would just say your name and you had to go up. Right. That was the deal. I decided, I decided huh. that, when the, one of the, the kid was going to go up, we were all going to boo. You remember this? <laughs> we were all going to boo, right? So it literally, there's like 20 people go up next, and literally it goes up, boo, boo, boo. And, you know, there's, there's HBO people there. There's people from Aspen. There's agents there. This guy thinks he's going to be, this is his big break, and everyone's Booing him, you could see his soul just imploding on stage. Oh, Jesus Christ. And so he he guts through it, and then after he's done, boo, boo, boo. Everyone in the room knew who engineered this deal. I engineered this deal. <laughs> but where does he go? He goes running up to you to yell at you. Go, I know McClellan did this, but man, Lenny, I didn't expect that out of you. <laughs> I'm, oh, that's horrible. I remember that story now. Thanks. I, I think I blocked that out of my head. <laughs> well, yeah, there was, there was a lot going on. I just, I, that weekend, know, I just, I, I, we also, that was also when you and I took a cab ride with uh, Stanhope and Hedberg to the Kingston Mines at like four in the morning. That show. We yeah. went down to, uh, oh, yeah. We were just, I, I, you weren't listening to blues. We were hammering out of our minds. That was a bad night. Yeah, that was hammering. And I was like yelling at the cab driver in the sure. front seat, and the guy yeah. put his hand on my head. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Talk about that to this day. Well, I remember we were swearing up a now, storm, and somebody said favorites. something about God, and then he got all touchy, and then you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, we can talk about everything else in the world, but you say the word God or Muhammad, and that's an issue in this in this cab." That's. The thing. I think I threw jihad in there. That in the. The, this thing that started the fire. I can't remember. I was really hammered. You we were just smoked. Oh, we're gone. But there was one time, because we used to hang around in the box office, the Zanies, all the time. Right. And we we would see coming up and coming up. And you and I were doing a show. All right. You had a month where you were the house MC at the Down Zanies. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And I was going to be the middle act. And Fred Klett, who was headliner, legitimate stand up comic. Funny guy, but Fred Klett is very clean, squeaky, yeah. squeaky clean. So I decided, or I decided, and you went, yeah, good idea, that we're going to be really filthy in front of Fred. <laughs> we're going to be really dirty in front of Fred. We're going because we're the, you know, we're the the hole in the wall gang. So come to the the first night, Tuesday night, and I'm like, ready, and you're like, yeah, yeah, and you go up and you just do your normal set. All right. So I'm like, screw you. And I went up and did 25 minutes of absolutely vile filth. Yeah. I was killing, but it was like the filthiest thing you've ever seen in your life. And then Fred Klett comes on. He does his show. You know, I'm sitting in the back. I'm just waiting for it. All right. And then, and, you know, there's always comics hanging out. And Fred goes, you know, I want to talk to you. And everyone's like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Fred wants to, to, to teach me a lesson. Right. And I'm like, hey, you know. Take your best shot. I'll give you, you know, I earned a swing, but that's all you're getting at this point, really. I don't think you know what you're getting into. So we go upstairs to the, uh, the like, the green room area, and uh, and he, he sits down. And I'm like, okay, this is odd, because I'm expecting we're going to fight, or at least yell and scream. And he sits down. So I'm like, all right, I'll sit down. And he goes, what are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? He goes, why aren't you in L.A. or New York or something? You're just too damn funny to be here. And I'm, I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You, you did teach me a lesson. All right? And what he taught me that night, I'll never forget it. I don't know if he meant to or not, but it's like if you want to close rooms, you want to be the headline comedian, you have to not only, A, take all comers. All right? B, you have to act like a pro. 
you have to act like you've been there before. And that really changed my mindset around because I was, at that time, I was like, okay, I want to be tough guy, edgy guy. But it, that experience helped me learn. You do it at someone else's expense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those little lessons that I have the utmost respect for Fred Klett after that. I, I mean, I didn't know him, but the guy showed me how to be a pro. He showed me. Yeah. That day. And the rest of the week, I, I did a normal show. I did like, you know what? Fred, you, 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 you've earned it. You've absolutely earned it, man. So, and then I left Chicago right pretty much after that because I, I'd run out of friends. <laughs> you had to leave. You didn't have a choice. <laughs> I think I better get out of here. I think I'll leave. Yeah. That's a good point. No, Clutch a good comic, dude. He's the type of guy. But he's one of those guys that never wanted to leave the Midwest either. You know what I mean? Toomey was like no, that. Those guys just stayed family. in the Chicago area and just hung out. No, but it's just that those those little lessons that you get in comedy, working with other guys, whether you don't know their lessons or not at the time, they're not meant to be, but you take them as lessons. Right, right. And and that that served me well. You know, I'm like, okay, that that really changed my mind in about how to handle things. Yeah, how to how you should handle that situation, because he yeah, because like first of all, you know, a big believer if you're headlining. You follow anybody's behind you. If you're headlining, you got to, there's none of this, hey, don't do this and keep it clean and do whatever. And I mean, if you close the room, you close the room. That's it. And Fred, and Fred knew it. He's like, you know, he, just, he knew what he was going to do. You know, he knew his thing. And he, he was a seasoned veteran. And, and yeah. he, even after I, I flushed the toilet for him, yeah. <laughs> he still up and did his job. Yeah. You know, and, and but that's, that's what you have to do. You can't go, well, don't do this, don't do that. You're like, no, it, it's one thing to go, okay, I have 45 minutes, I have 50 minutes, I have an hour, whatever. Okay, th that's not enough. Yeah, yeah. You have to be the guy. You yeah. have to be able to, to dictate how the room happens. Yeah, you control right? the it. The presence to be there. Yep. You know, you can't just sit there with your mic on, your elbow on the mic stand. Yeah, hey, who's on Tinder? Shut up. <laughs> No, you're right, dude. That's that's hundred percent correct. That's totally true. When you when you, if you're closed in that room, if you're in that scenario, you it's it's not about how much material you have, or you know what I mean, or how, or how funny you think you might be. You, I mean, you're in charge of that room. You got to get up, you, and it's all a mindset, dude. It's all more mindset than anything. It has to do with getting up on the stage. Look at Fred's a good example. He could watch you destroy and go, okay, cool. I'm gonna go up now. You know what I mean? He's not phased yeah, by it. Right he's, sure. Yeah, he's not like, no, oh, he's shit. confident in himself. He's confident in his material. Yeah. And he yeah. handles it his own way. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and it's not about whether you think people are funny. Like, people go, what do you think about Larry the Cable Guy? Uh, well, I, Larry the Cable Guy does movies and television commercials, and his face is on a bag of potato chips, okay? <laughs> That's what I think about Larry the Cable Guy. He figured out something I don't know. Yeah, right. He's got – exactly. <clears throat> it's a he's fact. Got, he's got to – yeah, he's, money is like the fifth most important thing. Yeah. No, that's true, man. He's not doing a, a, a you know a streaming internet show from his dining room right now. I know he's not doing that. No, he's like you know. I don't think Larry the Cable is funny. Yeah. Guess what? Does movies and you watch movies. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah, a lot more people think he's funny than you. So, end of story. There you go. Do you miss it? Do you miss uh, being in the club? In the club? You miss being in the club? Yeah. Do you? How are you doing with that, man? Yeah. I just, I, they just fucking. I just now. I got a message today that the comedy store was open it's down in uh, in San Diego County. They just closed the comedy store down in San Diego. They're doing outdoor shows. I don't know why yet. I didn't get a report on why, but uh, it sucks. You know? Yeah. There's no. I mean, they were and they were doing those outdoor shows, which aren't that great. Here we go. Because it was. It, I was in I, my, my my father passed away. It was very odd. But, um, Hold on, John, you froze. Hold on. <laughs> look. Hold on. I've done this before. Let me see if this works. Hey. Are you there? 
All right, we're back. Yeah, I got you. I put you in a little yeah, mini. Okay, I'm here. here we go. Okay, let's see if that. Let's see. Let's yeah, see. I don't know what happened. We all lost. Uh, I don't know. Things but, are crazy. Um, let's get out of there. So there we go. When yeah, it is. When uh, when I saw you the last time, you and I were sitting down at the Irish pub, uh, the yeah. Irish bar down at Hell's Kitchen, and uh, you were telling me about doing you know cruise ships and stuff. Yeah. And I've had a lot of people say that to me about doing it because back when you. John, hold on, John. John, I keep losing John. Hold on. Let's try something else here. I don't know why that is getting weird. Let's try this one more time. Try it. Say something again, John. I keep losing you, man. Oh, this is uh, frustrating. By the way, this is not my fault. This is not the. This is the kids at Westview. Those little shits. I'm blaming those kids. John keeps freezing, man. Look at that. It's awkward. Look at John. Look at him. Look at this guy, though. <laughs> Let's try another. Okay. Right now. Let's do them both. What about both? I think one of those will work. John? John? John, John, <laughs> we lost John. He's totally frozen. He'll be back, though. Be patient. Let's see. Let's say hello to some people online here. We're going to give John a second to see if we can get this Wi-Fi connection figured out. I think there's something wrong with his Wi-Fi. That's what I'm guessing. Oh, he's back. Hold on. Yeah. We're back? back. I think you're back. Yeah, John, you're back. All right, I switch Wi-Fi networks. Oh, there we go. There we see. Yeah, it yeah, works out. All works out. All right, where were we? All right, all right. We were, were talking about when you and I were having uh, we're the down conversation at Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, uh, the Irish and, breakfast. Um, I love a good Irish breakfast, by the way. We, uh, you know, cause when you and I first started, people that worked on a cruise ships were called a boat act. We made fun of them. Right. That uh, you know, because they weren't good enough to cut it in the clubs. But it's it's so different now. Yeah. And and. I've had a lot of people, my friend Lars from Edmonton. Oh, I love uh, that cat. He's funny. Uh, William Lee Martin. I should call um, him. You know, a lot of these guys that I, you, uh, that have, that work cruise ships, and they've, they've overcome every objection that I've had about it. And I remember when I, I, what did I tell you when we were sitting there? I'm like, I feel like Henry Hill and Goodfellas when they're, they're trying to flip them. In the witness protection program, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, and you're just like, hanging on. You got a million excuses but, not to go. And well, and it's funny because not too long after that, the guy that books you on the cruise ship, Ron Reed, um, I talked to him, and we we're going to get. I'm going to do a uh, a showcase for Carnival in Las Vegas, and then the world gets sick. Yeah. So that was the end of that deal. But you know, the from what you were telling me. The cruise ships, it's almost like the regular club atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, well, that vibe, the crowd the crowd of people that go, especially on Carnival, you know what I mean? Like on Princess and some of the older lines, it's a little different. It's more of a theater show. But Carnival and even some of those levity Norwegian ships, they're clubs. So that, that, that crowd in that club is that crowd that was in the club when you were doing stand-up in the cities, you know, 20 years ago or 15 years ago. That, that They're hipper, younger people in those clubs that want to see. It's a regular show. It's great. And some of them, they balance, they have clean shows and adult shows, and you just do one or the other, man. But the crowds are dying. Yeah, you, do, you do a balance. Yeah, I, I remember, mean, I, I, I didn't think it would be a good idea when I heard they didn't charge people to come in. You know what I mean? Because if you're on the ship, you get to go see the show for free. And I was like, free audience, that's a nightmare. You know what I mean? It's like the first thing I always hear of. is like a paper thing. Like, oh, God, they're going to suck. But, man, cruise ships. No, nah, but it's different in my mind because these people are like, okay, we're on the ship. Yeah. We're on vacation. You know, we're not going to get out of line here. No. You know, we're, we're, we're on our honeymoon. We're on our anniversary. This is a special occasion. We want to go out and we, we're going to go to dinner. We're going to get dressed to go to dinner. And we're going to go to the show. We're going to get dressed to go to the show. No. Oh, and I, I, every week I see people that comment on this show, the people that have seen you on the boat. 
Yeah. Which yeah. I think is remarkable. Yeah. They, I mean, there's a lot. They make a night out of it, man. It's a whole, you know, it's, think about it. If you're with your wife or girlfriend or whatever, you got seven days. Every night you're having dinner and a show and going out drinking and doing whatever. You know, that's seven nights. And they look forward to those shows, man. I mean, everybody looks forward no, to their comedy. It, it, and if they don't want to see comedy, there's a million things to do in the shit. That's the best thing I think about it. When somebody's not, totally. they just go to the casino, man. There's another show, a casino, bingos, all kinds of crap on that ship. You just know shit I mean? on a deck chair, you yeah. know? No, go sit outside. Let the, you know, okay, you want to watch the moon at night? Sure, that's fine. Good for you. Whatever. Beautiful. You know? Yeah, there's something for everybody. There's something for everybody. Yeah. Uh, where are you? Uh, I know where you're at in New York. Dude, are you getting out? Are there any shows yet? What's going on over there? I keep hearing. There's not really, you know, there's a, a couple of people are doing like drive in shows. Yeah. Uh, have you done, have you done those yet? Have you done that yet? No. Oh, dude. Um, <laughs> I've done a few of the. Uh, uh, the, the the online shows uh, through the various uh, hookup things or whatever you call them, um, and those are those, it, those are weird. Yeah, you know, I, it, it, it's like it's like I'm trying. It's like you're you're, you're doing a, a ransom video for a kidnapping victim or something. You know, it's like I, <laughs> just, cover, I, I, just cover your put something in front of your face. You know what I mean? I want five thousand dollars in a plastic bag and put and it in the video, garbage can. The people aren't even in the video. They've got the popping fresh doll, and I'm like, "It's, it's a first for me," you yeah. know, <laughs> doing doing a little show for for popping fresh and their friends. This is somebody auditioning for a voiceover job right there. In the middle right. Of boom, yeah. right. All right, that's good. That's you know, and, then, and then you see him lying on the couch, and then all of a sudden you don't see him. I'm like. Hey, move the camera over. I want to see the show too. Yeah, right, 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 right. That's hilarious. they're having a little, you know, third base practice. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm do. I, I, plus, I did them because I thought it was whatever. I did the Zoom show just because it's something. I'm not. I got no options. I haven't done a live show. I've done one live show in San Clemente about uh, four weeks ago since March. That's it. That's the only thing I've done live, which is weird. It's the longest I've gone without performing live. It, 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 it really is weird, but in my mind, you know, and, and this is kind of a hackneyed analogy, but this whole COVID lockdown, people say it's like being in prison. Okay, then you need to think about it like that. And there's three ways to do prison time. All right? You do your time and you keep to yourself. Number two, you disrupt shit and you start causing all sorts of calamity. Or number three, you plan your escape. And that's what you're doing with this show. And that's what I'm doing with my weekly videos. I'm planning my escape, you know, in, in my mind. I don't know if it's going to get me there. I don't know yeah. if I'm going to get over the wall. Right. But that's the mindset that I have to have. I needed to do something constructive and creative. Right. No, that's smart. That's exactly why I started uh started doing the show with that you're talking about poor choice right which is the, the close to the that's it that's it all right i got it if you haven't seen poor choice it's a weekly video series where i drink the worst liquor on the planet wait i might have a promo Every for week. it i might have a promo for okay. it here let me see if i have the promo. which one you have i have the the shortest one the shortest one i could find no the promo you've got a bunch of clips and then i have the promo okay do the promo that's fine okay let's do the promo if you haven't watched poor choice you're missing the hilarious video series where we drink the worst <laughs> liquor on the planet. And there's a new gut-wrenching episode every week. I'm John McClellan, the host of Poor Choice. And in the last few weeks, I've choked down coconut vodka, Thunderbird wine, cinnamon whiskey, and a few other things too painful to mention. You can watch all of these episodes right now. Listen, it won't kill you to watch Poor Choice. As for me, <laughs> we'll see. All right, yeah, that's the that's it. That's Pro Choice, dude. Are you sure you? I did in a nutshell. So you find uh, a best, you find a good way to do something constructive and drink your way through the quarantine all at the same time. Constructive and constructive at the same time. It's, it's, that's that's classic John McClellan. That's exactly how you roll. It's a little really, bit of both. Both sides of the magnet. Absolutely, there. yeah, right, right. That's the best. I love it, man. That's uh. So what else? What all of you drank on that show, dude? That uh, v coconut vodka. You're gonna be kidding me. That doesn't sound. No, that that's no joke. All right, I've had 
well tequila, oh. wine in a in a can, uh, <laughs> Wait, cinnamon there's, whiskey. There's wine in a can. Wine in a can. <laughs> cinnamon whiskey, coconut vodka, sour apple liqueur, Ugh. uh, ouzo. I like ouzo. Uh, slow gin. Ugh. Not a gin. Rita. What? Rita's the Bud Light Rita's. Oh, the co- the Mar Butter Rita, Butter Butto Ramp, whatever. Yeah, that that, is. yeah, Strawberry Rita. Yeah, yeah. I uh, had Thunderbird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my god, that shit's no joke, dude. I've had Thunderbird. That's bad. That's bad stuff. I, That's I, old I, school. I was wasted all day. That was the first uh, generation of crappy liquor back in the day when we were when, when the girls I was going to high school that were still drinking Boone's Farm. Thunderbird was about five years before that. That was the cheap. Well, basically I said gasoline. In, the, in the show that it's part of the Mount, Mount Rushmore Skid Row wines. That would be yeah. <laughs> it would be Thunderbird, uh, Mad Dog Twenty Twenty, <laughs> Wild Irish Rose, and Boone's Farm. Okay. That is a Mount Rushmore of Skid Row wine. And you can get four of those bottles for like uh, f- uh, six fifty. That's it, right? All four yeah, of those together, like six. Defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> Clear. All right, man. That's good. so. But I, I get a lot of suggestions for people, you know, for for things to me to drink, and that's when I knew I was kind of on to something. Yeah. People always give you suggestions, like when you started your show. People are like you should do this and do that, and some of them are constructive, and some of them are nonsense. Sure. And right. you have to filter out which ones you like. But when people go, I think you should try this liquor. I think you should try this liquor and this liquor. Then I knew because a lot. I've done probably four or five shows that have been suggestions. Right, right, right. Okay. You know, Slivovich was the one that people suggested the most. It's a, it's a, it's a plum brandy. Okay. And uh, it's no good. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's no good. Uh, I think, what did I say in the program? This is what gonorrhea tastes like. I'm pretty oh, sure. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard, man. <laughs> what the, so, I, I, I saw the Bach one. I like the Bach. I could, I could, I could almost show Bach a, beer. Yeah. Which I, I could show. I could probably show a full one on here. Hold on. Let me see. You yeah. know, if you're going to show the full one, show the Rita. That's the best one. All right. Let me look for it. Let me find it, man. I'll find it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Which one's this? Rita or Slivovich? Bud Wright Rita's? The and the cinnamon whiskey, they're like six minutes long. They're a little long. Bud, Wright, Bud, uh, Bud Light Rita's. Yeah. All right, man. Let's see if I can make this happen. I'm pretty sure I can. Dude, I can figure out some stuff. All right, man. Let's give it a shot. Bam. 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 Uh, bam. Okay. This is the Rita one. Let's go for it. Rita, baby. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. There was a time where you would have difficulty drinking beer in public places. A can of beer looked like a can of beer, and the authorities could spot it a mile away. They were distinctive. <laughs> Nowadays, there are so many cans out there, nobody knows what you're drinking. Cop will ask you, hey, are you drinking a beer? Uh, no, it's a plant-based anti-inflammatory spicy mold <laughs> detox tonic. <laughs> the cops just got tired of weeping for the future and moved on. But it's not what's on the cans that bothers me. It's what's in the cans. We stop putting beer in beer cans. There's a whole parade of new flavors and styles. This craft selection has a whisper of quince and a hint of lavender. Yeah, let me whisper you a hint. I want beer-flavored beer. Who needs flavors in beer? Are your kids drinking it? Timmy doesn't like the taste of beer, so we put high C in there. Let me explain something to you. Beer was invented in the 5th century BC, so that means it took 7,000 fucking years for people to get tired of the taste of beer. The same people that made the pyramids made 
fear. They knew what they were doing. There's no need to mess with it. Now, I know I sound like the cranky old man that yells at you to stay off his lawn. But you know what those old timers always had in their garage? A refrigerator full of beer flavored beer. And the reason he yelled at you was not to get you off the lawn, but to stay away from that refrigerator. Because if just one kid got the tape to that beer before they were ready, he knew, the old timer knew, they would eventually be the one to fuck up the whole thing by adding flavors to it. Sorry, old man. They ran over us with a beer truck carrying today's Poor Choice episode, The Read. The Rita. Not quite mixed drink because there's no tequila in it. Not quite beer because of all the stuff we talked about before. I'm not quite sure what it is other than being the cauliflower pizza of the alcohol world. Meaning this whole thing is kind of a shifty move. Even how they pitch it to you is shifty. The Rita is being sold as a refreshing beverage to enjoy outside. A refreshing beverage to enjoy outside. That sounds like beer, doesn't it? Why did beer get grounded in the house? If I'm outside, I'm drinking beer in a can with a hole big enough to put my cigar out in. I'm not drinking these outside. I'm drinking them inside, but no one can see me. Let's rock the Rita. I know, I, I, I know, I know, I drank a lot of that in order to make that discovery. It makes you wonder how much I really know about what urinal cakes taste like. It's, it's, it's just too sweet. It's like kissing a babysitter. Another analogy you should probably be worried about. I bet you can make a lot more money recycling Rita can than any other cans because everyone you find will still be half full, so they weigh more. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what have we learned today about the Rita? If you're going to drink a Rita, you're going to need the accessories to go with the Rita. What I'm speaking about is the exotic bird on your shoulder and a henna tattoo, a copper fit bracelet, the visor with the fake hair on the top, a ukulele, tube top, socks, and sandals, a who farted t-shirt, and last but not least, a car breathalyzer. You see, Narita is the only drink you could have five or six of and still be able to start your car afterwards. Thanks for watching Poor Choice. I'm John McClellan. <laughs> Dude, like, like kissing a babysitter. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your analogies. They're the best. <laughs> Thanks, man. No, I, it's, I, I, it, it actually takes a lot of work because I, I, I take the time to, to kind of script it out. Um, because if you just start shooting the shit, it's just it's going to go on and on and on. It's right. not going to make any sense. I really need to keep it in around the four to five minute mark. So I have to edit myself. And I, 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 I like that episode because it all kind of made sense. Right. You know, sometimes you're just throwing a bunch of jokes together. But this, especially the, the, the beginning uh, part of that, about about the, the the flavors in the beer is something I actually think I might put into my stage show at some point. I think that's good enough quality. Yeah, right. But uh, it, 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 my favorite thing are the comments that I got, not so much on YouTube, but like on Facebook when I'll, I'll, I'll post it, the link up. And somebody had asked me after that episode, <laughs> did you really drink – the Rita's. And I'm like, yeah, I drank that one and three more. I shit Nestle's quick for half a day. 
<laughs> and somebody goes, was it chocolate or strawberry? <laughs> well, it was chocolate at first. <laughs> And then segued into like a strawberry type thing. Yeah, it kind of, you know. Do I? Uh, uh, well, good job with the videos because one thing you do that other guys don't do, or one thing, you, yeah, you 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 obviously have it rehearsed and and down because there's no editing. You know what I mean? It's all a lot of these, a lot of the videos I see now are it's just it's a clip, 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 clip. They just edit stuff. They they'll tape themselves for 15 minutes and then pull stuff out. It looks like you do yours from beginning to end. You know what I'm saying? Well, I do, but I do a lot of takes. Okay. Uh, it's not all done live, you know. I, no. I, 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 like the the first part, I'll do four takes on that, right, and okay. try to get the best one. Okay, and and then do the next one. And what I had to start doing, because I would do them chronologically, so I would do the the first part, and sometimes there's two parts for the first part. And then I would drink whatever I'm having, and then I would do the the sort of epilogue at the end. Yeah. And so I do two or three, maybe four takes with the drinking. And if I do two episodes in a day, all right, now I'm eight shots in. Yeah, right. All right? That's true. Anything so about how much you're drinking. Some of those videos at the end, the first like five or six videos, I'm fucking hammered. Yeah, getting a little loopy at the right? back end of that. At the end of the Thunderbird video, I am shattered, man. <laughs> shattered. <laughs> So I had to I had to kind of figure out all right let's do everything first and then do the the drinking part last because otherwise you know it just what I was doing was get, I was doing like ten takes on the the last part because I couldn't get it right because I was yeah, smacked because you're all screwed up. <laughs> That's the yeah, I, I'm like you know okay we're gonna do spice rum and Thunderbird today so okay now I've got like oh, I said I'm eight shots in and I'm I, you know. My stomach hurts just hearing that spice rum in Thunderford today. I've had spice rum yeah. shots when I'm out of everything. I've done a spice rum shot. I'm like, oh, this is all I got left. All right. <laughs> Slam. Well, that sounds like, okay, we're going to shoot your, your dog or you drink spice rum in Thunderbird. Huh. <laughs> dog again. How long do I have to think about that? <laughs> no, but people, people always ask me, you know, do you really drink this stuff? And I go, yes, I do. Yeah, I do drink it. Listen, Lenny, you know me. I'm, yeah. I, I, I'm not trying. To, this isn't the Today Show with <laughs> Jenna and Hoda <laughs> with their glasses of wine no. at nine o'clock in the morning. Right. The, how much bullshit is that? Really? Yeah, right. If they're drinking wine, the third hour of Today Show is a cry fest. Yeah. They're was... crying about some pony <laughs> they didn't get for Christmas when they were nine years old because they're. <laughs> shivved up on wine at 10 o'clock in the morning yeah all goofy and loopy coming in their empty stomach right. firing down white wine yeah, right. those two. no i i drink this stuff i have to 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 really kind of give you an idea of what it tastes like i can't cheat yeah right oh, God. oh dude spice rum is killing me that's not good at all all right man let's jump on facebook and see if these people have some comments everybody has comments for your liquor who's here john DeCross okay. is here well, oh, Mad Dog 2020, Boone's Farm. These are all ones we're all familiar with. What's Gan B? What is it? Gan B. Larry travels a lot, so it's a Chinese thing. Okay. Oh, they're bringing up foreign liquors. I don't know. This Bahu, Bahiju. Is that bah that Lebanese one? I think so. Somebody's telling me about some Lebanese liquor that's like made from paint thinner or something. I don't know what it's from. Uh,. What? <laughs> That's great. Have you had rakia? Rakia, no. That's a Croatian liquor made from grass. I had that when I was in Croatia. It's uh. Wait, when you say grass, are you meaning <laughs> grass mean... or 1976 grass? No, I mean uh, you know, like for your front lawn, it's like they found a way to make liquor out of grass because and they ferment it you i don't know how they do it out of anything all right yeah. they proved that in jail <laughs> yeah well there you go that's what they do so they whatever they Proof did jack. yeah okay so that's one so a lot of I, I don't have the facebook on a lot of people are leaving comments because i'll look through them and, yeah and uh, listen i i will try it all right if it's you know i i try to stay away from brand names all right, right. things that are that are a brand name i've done a couple of them but i, I really would like to go like I have an episode coming up with peanut butter whiskey. 
Oh God, those are two of my favorite things, but together, no way. Not not anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I've already taped it. Uh, but it... I, I, I try to stay away from brand names. But I listen. The people suggesting things, I love that because that means you're gonna watch. Yeah. All right. right? I'm, right. I'm trying to put out content for you to enjoy. Right. You know, like I, I post it. it I'm bringing it right to wherever you are, whenever you want it, for absolutely no charge. I can't do any better than that. Yeah, right. I can't. Yeah, right. I, I it's like, well, I can't really watch it. Well, what are you doing? Just look at your phone, man. So what 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 are the people saying? I'm looking now. Gan B. Uh, Larry's explaining Gan. Oh, it's called Gan Bay. I got it. Let me hang on. I'm, I forgot. I'm fucking old. Give me a second. Hold on. Uh. It says it's some bullshit toast. Oh, it's just toast that the Chinese make. It's called bottoms up gambe. So I guess that's what that that's what that is. But somebody keeps mentioning Baiju. Baiju. Are you familiar with Baiju? No. Right, I just see. did a uh, um, <coughs> soju, which oh. is a Korean spirit. I did that not too long ago. I'm gonna search. I'm searching Baiju now. <clears throat> Look, I can search stuff and everything. It's like technology. Oh, I don't want to do that here. No, that didn't work. <laughs> again, once again, this is going perfectly. Exactly the way I planned this to go was to maybe search around. All right. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, it's a mess every week, and people still tune in. That should I tell know. you something. Yeah, right I there. know. Right? Yeah. Uh, okay. It's uh, I see it's traditional type of oh singing. Well, that's not it. Let's see, calls for value. Oh, it's some sort of. Let's go back to the main page. It's the same All as right. soju. It's what? Oh, it's the same as soju. It's the same as soju. Thank God, yeah. John's assistant helped us out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any people over here at my house helping me out. Pricks, it's just me with a computer. So what's soju? What's that? What is it? Soju you... is a, a Korean spirit, uh, a, a clear Korean spirit that's made from uh, tapioca. Okay. No. Seriously? So it, it, if you watch a show, what I say is it looks and smells like vodka, and it's made from tapioca, which looks and smells like vodka after you vomit. <laughs> okay. So it goes full circle. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, but right. it's it's sort of a uh, uh, a lighter version. It, it's it's kind of like that that vodka kind of a thing, the way it's distilled, but it's not as high proof as vodka. Okay, I think I've heard of that. Well, then now all these so, vodkas they have all these grade school vodkas out now. They have bubblegum vodka. And these kids drink all this vodka that you can add. You can add to a drink, and you you don't even know what's in there. You know, I've seen more flavored vodkas than anything in the last. Uh, well, five it's years. just you know, I do the 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 latest video I have out is New Jersey vodka. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that got a little bit of a after Hudson River taste, or uh, what? What is that? What's that? I, I don't want to give away a lot of the lines because yeah, I, I think this okay. is a pretty funny episode. But okay. right. I, I, you know, I, I say, you know, if the problem with New Jersey is, you know, because I live here in New Jersey, right? And it's like everything that Jersey's famous for: Jersey Diner, Jersey Turnpike, you know, uh, Jersey Shore, Danny DeVito. Sounds like some dirty shit you look up on Urban Dictionary, right? <laughs> There should be a whole uh, Jersey page in the Urban Dictionary. Yeah, right. Be like a little What'd you do with that girl last night? I gave her the Danny DeVito. Gave her the Danny oh! DeVito. Dude, what's wrong with you, you animal? Oh, <laughs> why didn't you do the Cuban science exam? <laughs> I didn't. Oh. I, I I didn't have a ladder for that one, so I did the Scottish phone booth. Let's <laughs> Oh, I just made those up. They I like it. Exist. No, really? I can't tell. That's great. That's great. Let's, I'm, I'm, got my mind. I'm trying to think of other ones. The Scottish phone booth. That's good. The turnpike. The turnpike sounds fuck. That sounds pretty. Uh, yeah, they, they, I, I think Jersey Turnpike is actually on there. It's got to be. They, 
hit her, hit her right I'll the- tell you a story here. I was okay. I was having a discussion um, with my girl, not an argument because I'm not married. Sure. Um, about whether unicorns can fly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> discussion. Now, I'm of the opinion unicorns cannot fly. Pegasus can fly. Correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Got it. She says, no, unicorns can fly. They're magical. That's why you always see them with rainbows. Okay, that's a good point. All right? So I presented my counterargument, and she presented her counterargument. So what do you do when you get to an impasse? You go to the Internet to solve your problem. She types in flying unicorn, and it takes us to Urban Dictionary, something with a ladder, and you're taking a poop on a girl, and she reads it off. She goes, we're not doing that. And that was the end of the argument. <laughs> so if you can get to your arguments to the point where you have to go to Urban Dictionary to solve them, you're in a good place. That's good. <laughs> you're in a really good place. Do, 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 you, do you do that on stage? Is that from the stage? Is that in your act? I, sometimes, but it, Dude, it, it, gotta, that that's, is as it happened. That's yeah, but that belongs in your act. That's perfect. That's the that's the. I, I just, I've always said the truth ruins a good joke. Yeah, but that is as it happened. Yeah, no. Sometimes the truth word nails word. it. Yeah, that's come on. Sometimes you can't just, make shit. We're not doing that. Okay, we're done here. Okay, I guess we're let's done. Go get a bagel. Yeah, let's go get <laughs> something to eat. Are you interested in right, a jerk? We're done. Can I interest you in a Jersey turnpike right turnpike right now? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna Danny DeVito. You're disgusting. <laughs> You're disgusting. I don't know. I got a step ladder. Get away from me. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think I got the COVID now. <coughs> yeah. Oh, great. Thanks. That's how Thanks, funny Jeff. I am. I give people you diseases. Give me the COVID through the technology, through the internet, you bastard. <laughs> That's not cool at all. Oh, man. All right, do people have questions they want to ask me? I'm looking, man. I got uh, a lot of people are making Well, we have several Dirty Sanchez comments, which I knew those were coming eventually. <clears throat> uh, what else? Tell them oh, to look up the Houdini. The Houdini is the best one. Look up the Houdini. Look up, there's more comments coming in. Should have done the <clears throat> uh, the Der Wiener, Wiener Schnitzel. Okay, that might be one. I'm now I'm bouncing between uh, different formats here, Robbie. Isn't it great how we've taken this absolutely into the gutter? I love it. It's great. I was hoping it would go this People way. People are like, now, look up the one where you take the woman's arm off <laughs> and then you, you hit her in the arm socket <laughs> with your your, your weasel. And you, yeah. <laughs> oh, if you, God, if you, if you tuned on, if you tuned into this in the middle of the wrong line, you know what I mean? <laughs> You'd be like, wait a minute, what? The Danny DeVito? That doesn't sound right. That can't be right at all. All right. No I can't. More. One day, Danny DeVito is going to knock on my door. It's like, because of you, I'm on Urban Dictionary. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I got limoncello. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> there you go. That'll make you happy. <laughs> the limoncello. The limoncello. All right, man. All right. Well, the, how many, how many, how long, when do you upload the episodes? Do you have a specific time that you put them up there? Every, or, Friday. Or? Every Friday. Every single Friday, I post a new episode. Um, I let subscribers get it first. I post it around noon Eastern time on Friday. Okay. Then I'll post it on Facebook later on in the day. Okay, cool. So I've got about 250 subscribers. Hey, listen, I went from having like 20 subscribers on my YouTube channel to like 250. Yeah. All right. And I've got, I've been doing this three, four months at the max. Right. So, you know, people, people watch every week. Yeah. And and people share it. And I, I appreciate it. if you watch if you're watching the show tonight and you watch my episodes. Thank you. Thank you very much. It means yeah. a great deal to me. Yeah. If you don't watch the episodes, I'd like you to watch. I really do, because I think it's it's funny, you know, and it's just there's so much nonsense every day. People are yelling at you. You know, you're you're a liberal. You're a conservative. You're an idiot. It's like enough. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Everybody just yelling at each other on Facebook because they don't know what to do with their time. Yeah, come right. drinking with me. Come drinking yeah. with Johnny. It's all good. I'm a hug. All right. I'm a Christmas tree. That's what I am. 
Well, you're definitely. I have you. I had you on for the feel good show of the month. I knew that that would be the case here. So here we go. This is the feel good well, show. I appreciate of the you month. having me on when the Indians are playing. I appreciate that. Yeah, no much. problem. No problem. I played the other night during the Hawks games. Very confusing. I had it off to the side. I did. I saw that. You're like, oh, the, the Hawks won. The Hawks oh, are up three two. Yeah, okay, <laughs> here's our next guest. <laughs> I'm glad they did it when it's, they did. It was kind of like watching ESPN. I know. Oh, I, we're talking about everything but the the game. I know. Everything I do is I do that. I, I got to stop watching them. I got to stop having the games on in monitors around when I'm shooting. That's what happens. Because I can see it. And then it's I get like the updates. W3. Yeah. Right. All right. All right, man. Uh, John's only going to choose. Okay. We're good. Okay. Man, I think we're done. I think we're out, John. Dude, this was uh, anything else you want to plug? You get the show, the poor choice. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it John in the bio. John Comedy on YouTube, Got or it. just type in poor choice. You type my name in and go to videos. You'll find it. I'm at Booze Coma on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. You know, uh, I'm sure you'll put up a link on the uh, uh, on the thing here. So yeah. I, I'd love to have you along for the ride, everybody. I really would. Yeah, check out the uh, Poor Choice. I put the links to all that stuff in the bio for this video so people can check it out. So go on this Friday and catch the new one. And go on there now. There's a whole bunch of them. They're listed there. You can catch up on all of them uh, and watch them all. Poor Choice, great name for a uh, great name, by the way. Great choice. Thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was perfect. That was good. Uh, all right. Everyone say goodbye to John McClellan, man. That's the man. Everybody say goodbye. John, thanks, buddy. You're the best. You're the bomb. Yeah. That is John McClellan, folks. I was waiting for that show for weeks. He's a very good friend of mine. We don't spend nearly enough time to get nearly as much time together as we should. Well, you know, we're in separate cities now. You guys are great, man. Thanks for being here again. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for being here, of course. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'll be here a couple of days. If you're a cruise, uh, Carnival cruise fan or a cruiser or a cruise member, is a cruiser? If you're a cruiser, the rest of the week is uh, cruise comics. I got uh, Doug Williams on Wednesday, and Manny Oliveira is on on Friday. So I know that you guys, some of you guys are waiting for the Manny Oliveira show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the show. Two things, folks. Uh, <clears throat> like the video. Uh, subscribe to the video. Down in the corner, there's a little red box that says subscribe. Click that. Subscribe to it. Um, if you want to support the show in uh, some sort of monetary way, you can do so right up there. Go to uh, LennySchmidt.com. If you can't, it's a little thing right there. That's it. You type in LennySchmidt.com slash if you can. It takes you to a whole page where you can do some throw some money at me down page. Uh, Venmo, PayPal, it's all on there. There's all kinds of links. Robin Greenberg uh, supported today. Thank you so much, Robin. I really appreciate everyone. I appreciate everyone for tuning into the show, as you always do. You guys are the greatest. Uh, thank you very much for being here. As always, I will see you in two days. Oh, also, tomorrow, I'm on uh, someone else's show tomorrow. Hang on. I'm going to get the information for you guys as we speak right now. I was just looking at it. Tomorrow night at uh, 5 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, I will be on loot. Hang on. Uh, oh, there's so many. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, come on. It's so confusing. I just saw it. Just passed it. Yeah. Lewis Johnson, folks, has his own uh, show, uh, and it's tomorrow night. I will be on that show tomorrow night for sure. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, it'll be 5 o'clock uh, uh, California time. That's 7 o'clock uh, Central time. And uh, I'm trying to find the – I lost the link for it again. That's fantastic. I'm really good at this stuff. Anyway, Lewis Johnson. Go to Facebook. Search Lewis Johnson. I'll put that information on my Facebook tonight. You can check it all out. Uh, guys, take care of yourselves. Thanks for being here. And as always, do me a favor. Uh, dream of Pinky. Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy is hosted and produced by – well, Lenny Schmidt, duh. If you enjoyed today's show, like the video on YouTube, give it a thumbs up or a way to go or whatever the most popular social media thing these kids today are doing. It goes a long way and it really helps us out. Check the description below for info on all today's guests, as well as the host. If you're a fan, you can follow them, like them, or even support them. Go to their site or page and hit their Venmo, PayPal, buy a shirt, an album, a download. Anything you will spend will literally help save the arts. In fact, if you want to support this show, just go to Venmo or Lenny Schmidt. It will help pay for all the stuff that my dad keeps breaking. Lenny Schmidt's Quarantine Comedy airs on Facebook Live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Each show is recorded, then uploaded to YouTube and released as a podcast the very next day. Also at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Everything's 6 p.m. We, we, we keep it simple. That's all we can handle. Thank you for listening to my dad's show, and as always, stream of Pinky.